Hey guys, so I'm going to have another video on the character component here, and this is going to be more or less to kind of show you how to use it. So starting off in the event graph you, of the character, you can see I have a bunch of functions that are being called here, and if you look, the character component's pretty much used in every single one of them. So what is the character component used for, and kind of where do you, I guess you could say, make use of it with? So this would be a portion of the documentation that would kind of help you out. So let's head over to that. Okay, so I'm at the root of the documentation. I'm going to go to the character component, and here I can see all of my functions. So starting through, this is where you want to kind of compare to the example content. So if I go over to begin play, you can see right here right off the bat, I'm calling a knit. So you can obviously, you know, hold uh, your cursor over it, and it'll show you the description that I set. Or you can go and you can find the init function, and it'll tell you a little bit more information, such as what the camera component does, the auto attach, first and third person mesh pins do. So you can kind of get a rough idea or you can just hold your mouse over it and it'll tell you the same thing. Now, the init function is literally as it says, it's the initialization and basically kind of what sets everything up for that character. Now, what all of this stuff is used for. This is basically used to handle your animations and getting your firearm. For the most part, that's really all you're probably going to be using it for. There is some other things and like little oddities, but that's going to be the bulk of it. Then you have random things like get magnification sensitivity, which you can see I'm using for my lookup and my turn. So basically my mouse inputs. And that's what allows me to scale very easily my sensitivity based on magnification. So here's one power. And I'm going to keep moving about the same each time. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. And a max zoom. And then I'll zoom all the way out, and it goes right back. So you can see that just by the simple function call, you can just multiply your input. It'll go ahead and handle your magnification, or your, basically your sensitivity scaling, based on your magnification. So there's a lot of random things like that in there that I would recommend you go through and look at. Now, as part of all this stuff, you can see, see this is how I'm getting the firearm. So if I want to, you know, call my fire function, I have to get the firearm. But to get the firearm, I'm going to want to go through the character component. So everything here that involves a firearm, I go through. I get the firearm. I make sure it's valid. Then I call whatever I need on the firearm. Now, that goes true for literally everything except for aiming. So start and stop aiming that you can call directly on the character component. So you can see like I do now. So when I press it, I make sure that I can aim or can aim. And this is just kind of like a blueprint dealio and that's for like a equipping firearm so you can't aim while you're equipping and then I just call start aiming and then when I release the right mouse button all I do is call stop aiming and that works literally as simple as such and all of the replication is handled for you and then you have other stuff related to aiming that is kind of more directed towards I guess you could say uh, point aiming so I have point aiming in here somewhere I think it's like at the bottom, yeah, control T. So here's where you can kind of manipulate and change your, your style of aiming. So I press control T, and that switches me to aim to do point aiming. So, you know, I go through, I aim, everything's like normal. I press control T. Oh, that was definitely R. So I press control T, and now I'm point aiming. And now when I press T to cycle my sights, I go through all the different point aiming sights that I have set. So I can go back and I can aim like normal. Or I can look over the top of my optic, and then I can go back to normal, and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of have your control there. You just got to figure out how you want to do it. So basically anything that's related specifically to the firearm or an attachment, you're going to have to go through the firearm. In order to get the firearm, you're going to have to go through the character component. And then you have other cases, such as this, where you do the same thing. But you don't have, well, actually, this will be better yet for a separate video because it involves the uh, interacting with parts, which I will get to in another video, like I, well, just said. Kind of repeating myself a little bit here. But that is the bulk of it. And then you'll notice for things like the firearm customization. So if I call this here, actually, now I have it in the event graph where I create it. So I create the widget for the firearm customizer. You can see the one thing that I take in is the character component. So literally all of this functionality here is driven solely off the character component. 
and nothing more. And that goes for the presets as well. So I don't know if this will... Yeah, so I still got these ugly setups. <laughs> but basically, that's how it all works. Everything goes through the character component. That's the core of this framework. That's what gives you access to everything. So now that I've hopefully reinforced that point enough, I'm going to end this video here. So that's going to wrap up pretty much everything in relation to the character component that you need to know. Once you get to the point where you need to know more, you should be at a point with the plugin to where you can make your way through it without really much trouble. So, because it's all basically the same stuff, you just got to find what you need and you call it. The system takes care of most of the rest of the stuff for you. So, that's going to be all for this video. As always, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord that's linked down below. And if, as always, this plugin will be linked in the description below as well. So, I'll see you in the next video.